Now, Lord, in the midst of all that we are going through, we know that you are with us. So during this time together, oh God, inspire us, unite us, and help us to live out your creed. May the words I speak, oh God, bring you praise and never, never shame. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was a little boy and lived in Chicago, my parents every summer would send uh, my brother and I down to Savannah, Tennessee. Leaving Chicago, going to Savannah was like going from Disneyland to a phone booth. Um, we didn't have any running water. We didn't have a, our trusty black and white television. Uh, no indoor plumbing and not a lot to do except work in the, in the, in the, in the country. Uh, so my brother and I, well, I did, I decided to uh, live inside my head. And before the Black Panther, there was Black Hop. I was the first black superhero. So I had a pillowcase for my cape. I got on the top of my grandfather's uh, barn and I decided I was gonna fly off to Chicago, back to Chicago. And my two best friends, my brother Vincent and my cousin Thomas came by, looked up, saw me on the barn and said, what you doing? And I said, I'm getting ready, I'm tired of Savannah, I'm gonna fly back to Chicago. And uh, my cousin Thomas said, you be careful. And my brother Vincent said, when you get back, you still gonna have to feed the hogs. So I dabbed off of that tall barn and when I came to myself, I could smell the peanut butter and jelly on Tom's breath as he bent down over me with the stick, poking me in my ribs. And he said, Roger, if you ain't dead, do something. That's a word today. If you ain't dead, do something. Our sermon is when God speaks. The world is asking us today, uh, is God dead? Remember during the time of uh, Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass, and Frederick was like waxing eloquently and he was angry and he was saying, we can't trust white folk and we got to take our arms and shed blood. And the great Sojourner Truth said to him, who was a godly woman, said to him, uh, Frederick, is God dead? I'm here to tell you today what you hopefully you already know. God is not dead and God is speaking to us loud and clear. Are we listening? God is speaking to us loud and clear. I love the, the, the text with Moses there, because if you look at the life of Moses, his whole journey, uh, he should have been killed. There was an order to kill all the babies. His mother uh, put him in a boat to save him. So he was orphaned early. Then a stroke of luck, he was, he was, uh, he survived and thrived in the, in the king's palace. And then he ends up committing murder and running away. So he has, a, he has a spiritual journey. He's going through a lot and God sees this and God knows he can use Moses, but he's got to get Moses' attention and the bush burns and Moses is trembling in, in fear. Tells him, take off your sandals, you're on holy ground. The first thing we have to understand about the world we live in, we're always on holy ground and God's going to get our attention and we can mumble and, 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 and use excuses and everything else. But when Pharaoh is oppressing God's people, God's going to act. We see Pharaoh today oppressing God's people and God is speaking to God's people. And younger people uh, are, are behaving like John Lewis. They're getting in the streets, black, white, rich, poor, Hispanic. They're getting in the, in the streets because God is speaking and they're listening. And so our challenge is, will we continue to listen to God who says, I want my people freed, let my people go. It's not a military uh, answer, it's a spiritual answer. That so much is happening and yet, and yet we are people of hope and faith. So much is happening and people are, are leaning on politicians, they're leaning on, on so many things, but, but we, what we lean on is we lean on the power of God who says to us, the bush, look at the burning bush. Look between the lines and see what is going on, what is taking place. What will be your role in all this? You can stay in the bed, cover your head up, complain, cry, and do nothing. 
with the power of prayer and a living God, you can rise up and say, Lord, I want my world to be what you want it to be. I want heaven on earth. We can make it so. So the first thing we do is we accept that God does speak. We accept the fact that God needs us. We expect the fact that God has gifted each and every one of us to do something. What that is is between you and God, but it comes through prayer and discernment. You won't know immediately exactly what God wants you to do, except that God wants you to do the right thing at, the, at all, all times. God wants you to stand on the side of right at all times. And God will discern what's right. Some, there are people who believe they're on the right side. They believe that what they're doing is justified by God, but they're not listening to God. They listen to other forces. We Christian folk, we listen to God. If you came up in seminary or you remember seminary, you understand what social action means. You understand what it means to take the fight to the streets. You understand what it means to be nonviolent. You understand what it means to be an advocate of God's justice. You understand that. And you never lose hope. That's why our choir can sing and smile and be joyful in the midst of a burning world and miss the people dying on the streets, knowing it will get better. But it doesn't get better if all we're going to do is pray. It gets better when we are advocates. It gets better when we teach our children and they teach and others teach their children to treat people like you want to be treated. That love will break down walls and barriers. Love will make a difference. We seek to make the world a better place day by day. And in the midst of all this confusion, I'm still trusting and believing God's got this. I'm still trusting and believing because every time I get despondent, every time I get down and out, I hear the voice of God, maybe through a child, maybe through a senior citizen, but through somebody who says, I got this. Somebody who says, um, I got your back. Somebody who says, I love you. Somebody who says, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to talk with you. I'm going to be there till the end. That's what makes your life worth living. And all the joy that we are missing will come. And all the hope that we need, we have to build on that hope. We have to fire it up. We have to tell our story of how God helped us to make it over, how God helped us to build bridges, how God helped us to live in a world with all the crazy things going on, not get better, but to get better and to continue loving folk. It is a hard thing to love folk sometimes. But that's what we're called to do. If Jesus could love folk in the midst of dying on the cross, we can love folk in the midst of the world going crazy. And I am convinced when I look in the eyes of young people on the streets who risk it all, I'm convinced that they are ordained by God to be there. They're ordained by God to make a difference. So as we struggle during these hard days, help folk understand that action, right action is important. You can talk, you can talk, you can talk about changes, but unless you get up off your behind and get to the polls and vote and vote and ask God to prayerfully help you to vote for people who stand for him, it is so easy for people to say they stand for Jesus. We had a whole group of folk who call themselves evangelical Christians and, 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 and they don't seem to care about morality or anything else, it's just that these are the issues they want to defend. All of us should be evangelical Christians. And that, that's not a political statement. It means that we live thoroughly immersed in the Holy Spirit. We live to do God's will, not to do a political will. So whenever we make our who we are political, we've lost it anyway. The challenge is clear for us. If we ain't dead, we got to do something. If we ain't dead, we got to listen to God speak. And when God speaks, things happen and things change. When God spoke to Moses and he said, go to Moses and tell, I mean, go to the Pharaoh and tell him, he sent Pharaoh with power. At the end of the day, Pharaoh had to learn a hard lesson that you can't stand your mighty army, your wealth and your power, can't stand before the power of God and my Lord. Can't, have, can't do it. I don't care how vast your army is. I don't care how strong they are. They will die. You will die. But God is not going anywhere. God is then, now, and forever. 
And that's what we tell a broken world as we look out that things are gonna get better. I'm not worried about November 3rd. I'm not worried about that because I know whatever happens, God still has plans for this world. And I've read the Bible thoroughly as old folks say from kiva to kiva. And I know what God says, that God has got this. He's got a plan for us. And if we don't live that plan out, see, non-spiritual folk can't hear God because non-spiritual folk, our ears are waxed up with the world, with greed and gossip and malicious behavior, and all kinds of addictions, and all kinds of stuff, because it becomes about us. But spiritual folk, spiritual folk, live and thrive and have their being with God and God's people. Every day is a wonderful new experience with God's people. Every day they wake up with so much joy and so much passion in knowing who God is. My daughter and I laugh about movies when you know every line in the movie, uh, like the color purple. You can, we can probably tell you every line in that movie. And uh, the movie Why I Got Married is one of that my daughter and I share and laugh about. And the woman goes through a bad marriage and she finally finds somebody to love her and treat her like she's the queen she needs to be. And she tells her friends when she meets them again, I wake up with so much joy. I just wake up just whoo. I'm just so excited and happy. And that's what we do as Christians. We wake up with so much joy because we've been through a lot. We wake up with so much joy, but God is going to fix it in our lives where that joy will come. But we've got we've to struggle and tarry with him and God will be in control. Do you wake up in the morning with that much joy? Do you make up in the, in the, wake up in the morning thanking God for that wonderful spouse there beside you, for your kids, for your home, uh, whether it's 20,000 square feet or 1,000 square feet, do you thank God for the roof over your head? Do you thank God for the beans and the steak? Do you thank God when you're drinking out of a jelly glass or a waterproof crystal? It doesn't matter. God is still God, and God still loves us, and God is still speaking. As God said to Moses, you go to the Pharaoh, and, and when they ask you who I am, you know who I am. I am who I am. I'm the almighty God. I'm God. Voice like thunder, I'm God who rules this universe. I'm God that nobody can defeat. I'm God who cares for you, who created you, and holds you in the hollow of my hand. I'm God, the God who took care of your grandmother and your great grandmother and your greater greater grandmother, and your and I take care of you now. And I'm the God when your children get on the highway, you say, God, please take care of my babies. I'm the God who who when my marriage is foundering, God, please save my marriage. I'm the God when I'm abused by the police. The Lord help change the system. I'm the God who can do that. Cry out to me. I'll give you what you need. I'm the God who can make a difference. This world is, there are many burning bushes, but God is standing tall. God is in Raja, Mayo, Cynthia, Miss Wyatt, Brother Travis, Brother Johnson, Brother Bell, Sister Davis, God is saying to us, do what you do best. Like Ray Charles said, we're going to make it do what it do, baby. It's one of my classic lines in the movie. When the, when the promoter and, and, and the record producer is, is getting on Ray Charles and asking him, can you make this happen? And Ray Charles said, I'm going to make it do what it do, baby. And I'm telling you, that's what God, he's going to make it do what it do. But in order to make it do what it do, he needs you. He needs you to put your, to, to, to raise your hands. And he needs you to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will join you. Yes, Lord. I'm excited about it. Yes, Lord. I want my legacy to be <clears throat> when my children talk about me. When I'm in my grave, I want them to say, Papa, a sister, a mother stood for something. They stood tall. They, weren't always, they were not always right. They were not perfect. But at the end of the day, you could count on them to be where God wants them to be. Reverend Joe Lara tells an awesome story about, about listening to God and talks about all his life he heard God speak. And sometimes it was a hard lesson. He had uh, John Lewis and others and many uh, of our seniors who I'm speaking to now have gone through that. 
Well, Joe Lyra tells a story about going to a Georgia town and they decided they're gonna walk several miles to a, from the highway to that town in solidarity to, with the sharecroppers and the people who are being abused in that town. And he said, it, when, when the powers that be found out that they were going to march, they came out to the communities and gave them turkeys and hams, trying to buy them off with turkeys and hams. And Joe said, the closer they got, the closer they marched, the closer they moved toward the town, they didn't see any lights or anything. He just knew that the people had abandoned them. They'd done that demonstration. They'd walked and they'd prayed and they'd done all that for nothing. And they said, they got closer and closer. They started seeing one light and two lights. And then all these lights, like a thousand fireflies were up. And when they got to the end of the journey, there were tables laden with turkey sandwiches and ham sandwiches and ice cream and cold Cokes and all that stuff. The people used the enemy's persuasion and their resources to feed the march. That's how God works. You can't bow off God's people. You can't run off God's people. You can't scare off God's people because we are soldiers of the cross and we are the faithful ones. We journey like Moses, Lord, okay. I might stutter, Lord, okay. I, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm really terrified, but boy, you ain't going by yourself. So shut up, put your sandals back on, get to moving. And you go tell that fool Pharaoh that his time is limited. Now I'm gonna give him one chance and two chances, but I am losing my patience. I am tired of the, of the Egyptians abusing my folk. And when God gets tired, when he, God gets tired of you, you may play, you may run, you may hide, you may play games. When God gets tired, you're going to know God is tired. When God wants to unravel your mess, you will know your mess is unraveled. When God wants to let people know that you're a faker and a slacker, folk going to know it. There are many folk in this world that wear the mask your mask. I am a Christian. Written on their clothes. Bible that weighs 40 pounds under their arm. Heavy laden with a golden cross worth, worth a couple thousand dollars. Slicker than Rick. Vaseline down. Pomaded down. Shoe shine. At the end of the day, they're going to get you nowhere. Because God's going to say, that superficial stuff, I don't care about. I need to know what is in your heart. I need you to have the heart of your grandmother who, who on Sundays invited other people to, 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 to eat with her knowing that she barely had enough to feed her own children. I want you to have the heart of your grandfather who got up out of his sickbed to help his brother and his sister get their crop in when they were, couldn't get it in. I want you to be like the little boy who had very little and shared his lunch with the people at, at school who didn't have anything. I want you to be like the little boy who helped feed the 5,000. God calls you and God, God calls me. And he says, are you listening? Did you hear me? Are you going? If I tell you to go on Friday, don't tell me you, <coughs> you're going on Sunday. You got to go then. When I was dating Cynthia, um, her her brother, little brother, lived out in the country, and I always wanted him to uh, be my buddy because uh, I thought that might help me get in, which is better with Cynthia. But I was um, somebody gave me a, a wonderful hound dog, and I decided to take the dog out to the country and tell my brother Shorty, I mean my brother-in-law, uh, ex soon to be brother-in-law Shorty, to take care of my dog, and he was a strange little boy anyway. But anyway. I took feed, food and water in a doghouse and, and all this stuff for him. And I came to visit. And I said, Shorty, how's my dog? He said, Ronja, he left Thursday. And uh, that's about two weeks. He left Thursday, May so-and-so, and I was going to look for him. And I think I'll go next week. I said, Shorty, that dog's probably in L.A. by now. You got to go when you need to go. You can't wait on something. 
He's dragging around, lost my dog, lost all my stuff because he's waiting. You can't, you're going to lose stuff. You got to go when God tells you to go. Where is God telling you when he's telling you to go? Get up and go. The question this morning is, are you ready? Do you have your traveling shoes on? Are you ready to do God's will? Are you ready to love people? Are you ready to stand for justice? Are you ready to go and go and go until you can't go anymore? Praise God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen.